Africa and welcome to Afternoon Express. Now we have an episode chock filled of chocolate infused savory meals on today's Afternoon Express cook along with me, Balisa Dembe. The enthusiastic chef chart returns to our kitchen as we explore different chocolates, make cocoa rubbed pork ribs with a garlic herb sauce, chicken with chocolate barbecue sauce, and we end it all off with a self sourcing chocolate pudding served with custard. Domi, welcome to the kitchen. Thank you, Balisa. Feels good to be back in the kitchen. It's always good to have you, girl, because today we're doing things so much differently. We are, Balisa, and we've got uh, Chef Chart here to explain a whole lot of things for us. Do you want to just start and, and let us know, Chef, what we're doing today? Yeah, well, it's all things chocolate. Ooh. Who Ooh. does not like chocolate out there? And it comes in various forms, styles, flavors, mm. and garnish with a little bit of controversy as well of what is chocolate, where is it from, and what's it made of. Fan of chocolate? I do love chocolate. I don't like sweet things, but you know, sometimes the body, which is so weird to me, and I want to find out why, my body does crave chocolate. Especially, you know, that time of the month, I just want anything chocolatey and something delicious and sweet too. So today, before we start cooking, Oh, Chef Chart has got an incredible spread of different types of chocolates in front of us. Some cooking chocolate, baking chocolate, different um, colors of chocolate. So I want to find out, Chef, number one, where does chocolate come from? Well, so chocolate in its whole, you know, is basically an equatorial sort of region. So start thinking of Tanzania, that whole sort of equator belt um, sort of fluctuating across either side of there is where most of it grows. And, you know, we've got to celebrate because actually Africa is a hero of growing cocoa. Yeah. Not all this international stuff, which we all love and it's great to have, but we have some fantastic product. Well, firstly, the natural ingredient comes from Africa and we should be supporting more local chocolate makers as well because it's all just African as a, as a whole. Yes, there's a lot in the in the, in the the US that, uh, you know, produces cacao, but mainly in this part of our world, oh, we are just so excited to have it and just to celebrate it. So let's understand what chocolate is made from. Chocolate is cocoa mass. So from your cocoa bean, which is extracted, we've taken out the, 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 the fat, which is cocoa oil. So you've got the cocoa mass, there's oil, sugar, and milk powder. Those are the four components that make up chocolate. So now, what's giving us the color? The color is coming from the cocoa powder, the cocoa mass. So when a chocolate says it's got 30%, 55%, 70%, it's meaning that 75% of the mass is cocoa related. Okay. The fat content yeah. is what's brought in. That's gonna be the, 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 the feeling of the chocolate. So when you sort of pick up chocolate and you rub it in your fingers, mm. that's the, the fat, the oil coming out of it. Now, we wanna get cheaper chocolate, we take away cocoa butter. Why? Because cocoa butter is what make you ladies look beautiful every day <laughs> yes. and goes into cosmetics <laughs> mostly. Yeah. So again, we start substituting and they go down this rocky road of mm. different types of chocolates. It's not always got cocoa butter in it. So Chef, let's go through the different chocolate that's in front of us today. I mean, I see some dark chocolate, white chocolate, milk chocolate. I see a little flaky chocolate, mint chocolate. So can you just break down for me, um, the first of all, different types before mm -hmm. we get into the different ways of cooking them? Absolutely. So let's start with milk, uh, sorry, with white chocolate. Mm. Is it chocolate? It's basically fat, milk powder, and sugar. What? So there is actually no <laughs> cocoa powder. So is it chocolate, <laughs> South Africa? Oh, I'll leave that one for you to decide. So that is what is made wow. up of white chocolate. Then you've got, you know, baking chocolate. Now, baking chocolate is the sugar component basically removed. It's unsweetened, it's bitter. Mm. So that is what is you typically using in your baking ingredients because you want to add more flavors to it or you're wanting to make sure you have the right baking consistency because sugar starts to change when you start to bake it. Absolutely. Bake it. Remember, it starts to break down in starting coating the flour, it's coating, uh, coating whatever the other flavor components are there. It's chemically, it's reacting when you bake with it. So would it, safe, would it be safe to say, or would say baking chocolate is the more flexible, versatile chocolate to use in terms of if you want to add more sugar, add more flavoring? Well, again, it all depends on your recipe and what you're actually making. So if you're making a dessert or if you're actually baking, again, it's all 
you're going to react differently with the amount of, you know, sort of uh, chocolate that you want to put in, and what's your final outcome. Okay. Then when you start looking at things like this, this is basically just sort of chocolate just rolled up into a log shape. Then we've got chocolate that's got flavors inside it. So start thinking mint, chili, pear. Mm. What, what, what combination do you like? Anything in particular? I really, really mentioned mine. I love a good dark chili chocolate. Dark chili chocolate to me? I'm a milk chocolate girl. Oh, you're a milk chocolate girl. You can flavor okay. anything. So to me, you know, to me just one sign that's milky and that's when you're adding more milk powder, that richness that you, you're coming through. Um, and but, would that be like this kind of chocolate? Well, again, there's lots of different types. You don't always necessarily know, but yes, when you start looking at chocolate mm. like that, you can see it's very milky, very creamy. Um, so that's going to have a much lower percentage of cocoa mass. So All then, right. Chef, if I want to make a sweet sauce, what kind of chocolate would I use? And then I'm going to ask you similarly, if I want to make a savory sauce, what chocolate would I use? So you can use chocolate in its in its, in, in its, in its whole, as what we understand as chocolate, as the chocolate in the bars. Yeah. Or what we can be using is actually our cocoa mass. All right? Mm -hmm. The cocoa. Now, I've got two different types here. This is just sort of just traditional, regular mm -hmm. cocoa powder. And this is roasted cocoa powder. I mean, look how dark and intense that is. It almost so looks like coffee. It does almost look like coffee. So now imagine, look at that. It's going to tell you darker, deeper, richer sort of flavor. So again, when you're starting applying it, how's that going to work in your final result? So when it comes to, to sort of um, sauces, you're going to probably end up using your cocoa powder because that's going to enrich, enrich it. Think of it like almost like a flour, okay. yeah, but a flavored flour. In, in essence. Now, when you're starting to use these other um, chocolates, then obviously you've got the sugar in there, you've got the milk in there. You'll be careful because you might have little wafers running mm, through it. I love a good wafer and chocolate. So that all starts to, to change in structure. But ultimately, at the end of the day, my question to both of you, is chocolate sweet or savoury? And to everybody else at home, is it sweet <laughs> or savoury? That's a good one. So, it actually is savoury in its raw state. You take that and taste that. That is pretty much... Mm. Bloody revolting. Really? Because it's actually savoury. We put the sugar and the milk powder, that sort of makes it unctuous, dark, decadent, like, you know, that feel-good factor you're talking about, you know, of when you crave chocolate? Mm. That's that sort of, you know, you know, that va va -voom, that, you know, oh. Uh, it's that on. thing that we said earlier on uh, in one of the shows, we mentioned about vanilla essence and vanilla extract, where the one is in its truest form, which is the van the cocoa powder in its truest form just broken down, mm. whereas the vanilla essence is what has been, been extracted thereafter. So in essence, it's been diluted, so more stuff has been put into it. The cocoa powder is basic plain. Once you add the stuff, that's when you start getting the chocolates, the milk chocolates. So the, in essence, the more you dilute it. <laughs> the essence of the essence. I like the your puns there. <laughs> beautiful. Well, now that we know what to use when we're cooking with chocolate, it's time to use that knowledge for good. Let's get to it. So we've had classic fashion from Timby, classic cars, thanks, Chad, and we've seen classic hairstyles. And you, Michael? <gasps> Classic. The classic range from Clover. Timeless taste. Made with love by Clover. Cocoa powder is not only an ingredient intended for sweet dishes, it adds a rich flavor to our delicious pork ribs. And everyone knows that pork is best paired with any type of potatoes. So today, ours will be paired with crispy potato wedges that will be drenched in a classic garlic herb sauce. Dumi, tell me more, girl. Before I tell you more, Bali, maybe let's just get the ribs out for Chef so he yes. can start with that. But in essence, what we're going to be doing here is no dish is complete without that delicious starch, whether it is a rice, whether it's a potato. In this instance, we're using your favorite girl, a mazamban. Yeah. And all we're going to be doing is we're going to be roasting that nicely, starting with the parboil, roasting them beautifully, making sure while they're still warm, they take in the flavors of our fat spread that we're gonna be using and the garlic and the, the thyme. So I'm gonna get started with that, chopping, uh, cutting up my potatoes into wedges, parboiling them, and then get the roasting started. Chef, you are on Coco Station and you're mm. gonna be doing the pork rub for us. Do you wanna just run us through all of that? Yeah, absolutely. So I got some uh, pork rib in here. Lovely mm. bit of uh, pork rib here. I've got the full actual belly of the, of the rib here. And in terms of ingredients, you got salt and pepper, sugar, chili, and then your cocoa. And literally what I'm gonna do is just take all of these and just pop it into here. I'm gonna do half and half so I can get an equal layering on either side. Beautiful. And, and is that essentially why you're using the brown sugar? Because that cocoa, as you have mentioned, at the end of the day, it is a savory dish. So that sugar is gonna be able to add the sweetness to the pork. A little bit of sweetness. But more importantly, what it's going to do is it'll start to caramelize and get this mm. lovely dark color um, to the actual uh, meat itself. So that's what that sugar is really enhancing there. Remember, pork, 
Pork is a sweet meat. Remember yes. from the, the famous movie? Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what it is. So it likes a little, little bit of sweetness, yes. but all that lovely fat you want to caramelize, render down, and get that wonderful, unctuous flavor that comes through from pork. I love the fact, Chad Dumi, that we're seeing sugar play so many different roles in our meats and in our different recipes. And I think so many times a lot of people don't uh, play with different ingredients enough. Exactly, Palace. And this is why every time, I'm not sure if you've noticed, whenever we're making a stew here or making something like that, I always like to add a bit of sugar because it's always about the balance. When, like Chef has done here, we've added the cocoa powder, which adds that bitter taste to it, which is not really bitter. Once you cook it down, you'll see. It's got the bitter taste, you've got the salt, you've got the sweet. So in, in essence, it touches all those um, uh, flavor, flavor noids on your tongue where you've got the different senses, the salty, the sweet, the sour, all of that. Yeah. And that's basically how this is gonna turn out when we enjoy it later with Beautiful. our potatoes. Love that, Chef, uh, you are going to work. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> I wanna get that flavor in there. So I really wanted to sort of stick. Remember, fat has lots of um, oil already. So I don't wanna keep, you know, basing more oil. I mean, you can if you really want to, but I'm really getting this rub into that meat so it really sticks beautifully and you can see how beautiful this coating of that cocoa powder is there and all you need to do is transfer that into your roasting dish the last little bit here i'm just going to sort of sprinkle over the top let's not waste any of that flavor and how gorgeous does that look? That, we're gonna pop into the oven and roast it away at 180 degrees or so. You can go a little bit higher if you want and just get that golden and unctuous. I love that. And on my side, I'm making that delicious um, garlic and, and, and herb sauce that's gonna be drenched in the beautiful potatoes that Dumi is making. But let's not forget here, oh, Dumi's taking a huge scoop of that beautiful clover classic fat spread. Now, what I love about this spread, Dumi, it's good for baking, it's good for cooking, basically all different types of recipes. Yes, Palissa, very versatile, because most times when we look at our uh, clover classic fat spread, you think that it'll only work uh, on a slice of bread. No, it's very <laughs> versatile. It's very versatile, like what we're doing now is we making sure we're enhancing the flavors of our potatoes by rolling them in that beautiful flavor of the fat spread. So all we're gonna do is now is once it's melted, I'm gonna put them over our potatoes that we've already parboiled here. You don't even need to parboil them for too long because the whole idea is just to make them cooked halfway because we're going into the oven to make sure they absorb more of this flavor. I'm, mm. I'm melting a bit more here, Bali, because I'm gonna mix it into that mixture you've got over there as yeah. well. Yeah. So this is the first batch. This goes into the oven. It's gonna get nicely toasted and roasted and then I'm gonna add the finishing touches, which is that garlic and thyme, which is basically just takes it to a whole other level. Chef, mm. thank you so much for the ribs. Oh, what do you want to, is there something that people get wrong when it comes to getting ribs and cooking them to that nice tenderness? Well, I mean, you know, you gotta think of it, I mean, if you put it straight onto your braai or to a griddle pan or something like that mm. there, you gotta be very careful because those little bits, I mean, if you look at my hand, it's all covered yeah. in the, that cocoa. This can burn and become very, very bitter. Mm. So be careful on that. Sometimes actually in an oven, it's a little bit more gentle but just allow it to cook. Remember, you've got you've got the it's part of the you know the belly. There's lots of collagen and you know sort of sinew and stuff. You want to break that down. So actually, in the oven for a nice length of time to really break down all that fat, all that collagen, so it is lovely and tender and succulent. To get this recipe, please do head over to afternoonexpress.co.za. Now on social media, we are keeping the celebrations going. Since it was hashtag World Chocolate Day yesterday, please do tell us what is your favorite chocolate. Use that hashtag Afternoon Express in all of your comments. Please do flood our social media pages because we just love to hear from you. We're elevating the taste experience though when we return as we show you an irresistible irresistible chicken with chocolate barbecue sauce recipe.
Welcome back to the show. Now we all know that chicken on its own is delicious and chicken with barbecue sauce is even more so. But have you ever tried chicken with chocolate barbecue sauce? Well, we will show you everything you need to know to make this delectable recipe. Chef Chart, I have never tried a barbecue chicken chocolate recipe, but it sounds absolutely delicious. And do me that end product, magnifique. Thank you, Bale. Um, I'm going to first actually ask Chef to uh, warm up his oil because he's going to need to brown the chicken for us. So can I ask you to take it out there from your, uh, from your drawer, Chef, and just warm up the oil for you because we want a beautiful, crispy, brown colour on the chicken on the outside. Mm -hmm. And then all I'm going to be doing is making the sauce that's going to go with it, Bale. So I love chicken. I love chicken with barbecue sauce. I love chocolate. So what better way to pair the two than to make a chocolate-flavoured barbecue sauce? Chef, oh. talk us through this recipe and what we need. Right, so very simply is chicken. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put a little bit of oil just to help with a little bit of glue for things to just uh, sort of stick to. And then, very simple, we've got a little bit of... Oh, wow, is that... I like cinnamon. Cinnamon, indeed, absolutely. So a little bit of cinnamon. Oh, beautiful. Is that some paprika? Oh, paprika, there we go, very good. Oh, I'm getting there, South Africa, I'm getting there. <laughs> Nothing like a bit of a test, you know. Uh, salt and pepper. And remember, not salt because you want saltiness, mm -hmm. but salt brings out the, the chicken flavour, or the chickeny flavour, however you want to term it there. So make sure you've got enough of that. And then just give that all a quick uh, toss. And then what's very important is you're heating up the pan. Now, actually, before I put the oil in the pan just now, I heated up my pan first. Really important, when cooking with oil, heat up the pan, add oil to get a higher temperature. When cooking with butter, cold pan, cold butter, when it foams, then you cook. Okay. All right, little tip to use or lose. <laughs> and again, okay, you can head over to our website. <laughs> If you're anything like me and you just want to shift, you know, a little slower, <laughs> just head over to our website, afternoonexpress.co.za, and we have detailed exactly how you can whip up this chocolate barbecue sauce with the chicken. Now, Chef, as you're laying down that chicken, do me on your side, what are you doing? I'm getting started with my sauce, Bali, and what I've got here is I've got my onions that have been um, sautéing a bit. Once they're to the consistency or to the texture that I like, I'm going to ask you to pass me the garlic there. But I just want to touch on something you said, Chef, about how the salt draws out the flavour of anything. Doesn't that make you wonder when you're making a steak or you're making something and you find that you've put too much salt and something is dry? That's exactly what Chef is talking about, where the salt has basically pulled out all the liquid from there. So in essence, I always tell people if you're making a steak, put the salt on after, not before it goes onto the pan, because it's going to draw out a lot of that moisture. But too much talking back to the sauce. My sauce <laughs> has got some tomato sauce in it. We've got some brown sugar. We've got that cocoa powder that we mentioned. I've also got some garlic going in there and an array of spices. I think any barbecue spice or baby barbecue sauce has a base, but you can add and subtract as you wish. Absolutely. Now you're going to start with that, that foundation. It's actually so important. Mm -hmm. And then you start building that up okay. to get that real depth of flavor. I mean, you know, it's, it's great seeing sometimes lots of ingredients, but sometimes the ingredients are important, especially looking yeah. for oriental kind of cuisine. You've got so many different combinations, but they all enhance each other. You know, it's almost like using something like fish paste. You don't want to taste fish paste because it's revolting. But what fish paste does to the body and the, 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 the um, the whole character of the dish, you know, changes. And that's what happens when you're starting to put various spices, like the tomato sauce as well, You've really got a great solid foundation, which enhances all the flavors, and especially the cocoa powder eventually. Brilliant. So, Chef, as I do chop up, mm. I've got a beautiful piece of dark chocolate here that's going to go mm. into that sauce that Udumi is making. On your chicken station, one thing that I learned about chicken through our Afternoon Express masterclasses is that chicken naturally has a sweet taste. Mm -hmm. If you just have, you know, chicken fairly seasoned you do pick up a sweetness in it but I also love the fact here that you brought on a steak now Tumi did speak about a steak <laughs> and you know we always want our protein to be succulent and tenderized so please may you show us different ways of treating our 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 protein well any protein that you start to sort of you know sort of brown and, and caramelize you're going to get a sweet flavor so I'm leaving this alone and you can start to see it's coloring if you want color leave it alone <laughs> oh my goodness and someone come into my kitchen the other day and they start fiddling I'm like no go away <laughs> back to my um, steak now now this you can actually is great for a piece of meat that is inexpensive mm -hmm. so a cut that is a lot tougher a lot more robust so not your sirloins and your and your rumps 
you want a, a, a steak, like a porterhouse, that's got a little bit more sort of, um, sort of sinew and uh, collagen in it. And all you need to do is take that steak and then lay it on a quite a, a strong piece of plastic. And then put another piece on top. And then what you're gonna do is take what we call a meat mallet, mm. all right? So a meat uh, a tenderizer hammer, and you're just gonna start to bash it a bit. Your two sides, you've got a flat side to work with, or when you started to really break down um, the collagen in there, you need the sort of spiky end. And just keep bashing that as you go. Now what's happening to all these fibers that are holding that muscle that's making it really strong, mm. is just sort of breaking apart. So all you do is bash that nice and tender, just like that and you get a steak that Beautiful. is lovely and flat and tenderized and you can do the same thing there. Chef, I see myself taking out all of my weak stresses onto that steak, <laughs> making sure that I use, obviously, the right side of it so that it is absolutely worked through beautifully. But today, it is all about the chocolates. We're making chocolates the star of our dish, and that is exactly what is happening on Dumi's side. I've already chopped up that dark chocolate for her. She's about to add it to that mixture. Dumi, help me understand it, girl. What is that now going to do to the, to the sauce? So all we're going to do now is that the chocolate is going to add that additional flavor to, that we need to the sauce. But as you notice, I put it in at the end because we don't want it to burn. We want to make sure it just melts beautifully into our sauce. And our chicken that we made a little earlier is already done. And this is our chicken balasa looking beautiful. And that beautiful barbecue sauce goes on top. And that is it, Bali. It's mm. a, a recipe for the for, for the. Wow. <laughs> oh, looks absolutely delicious. And, you know, the cooked chicken just before, you're going to add a little bit of stock. Okay. And just finish cooking that. So now you're steaming at the same time. So you have a moist, succulent bit of chicken at the end there with that gorgeous sauce. And also just to note, when putting the chocolate at the end, be careful not to put it in the beginning because what happens, it might split. You've got different fats working yeah. together. So you don't get that, um, you know, sort of separation. You get a lovely little sheen and that's it the chocolate to the end, South Africa. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. See, there's more to chocolate than just bars and slabs. And you can also enjoy this delicious dish. Just head over to afternoonexpress.co.za to get the recipe and full ingredients list. Now, coming up, we're going back to one of our favorite traditional ways to enjoy chocolates in a cake, of course. Now, Chef Charles will also be going face to face with Dumi in one of our five second games. <laughs>
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, thanks to a range of quality products by Excella, we can all enjoy delicious meals at home, whatever the occasion may be. From chicken kebabs to bran muffins and biryani, we've got something for everyone. Now, our very own Chef Dumi recently joined top baker and cake addict, Lamise Abrahams, in her kitchen to make a moist but oh-so-delicious Excella chocolate cake recipe. Check this out. Now a lot comes to mind when you think chocolate cake and most times people get intimidated by the amount of ingredients used to make a chocolate cake but lucky for us, Lamise Abrams, cake addict and top baker will be sharing with us a deliciously easy chocolate cake recipe that will have you in and out of the kitchen quicker than you can say chocolate. Now Lamise, chocolate cake or chocolate yes. in general, what is it about chocolate that makes people love it so much? <laughs> I think it's just that chocolate is everyone's comfort food and it never disappoints it releases all those yeah. happy endorphins mm -hmm. that just makes us want to eat it more and more I know right it just makes everyone happy and I mean on that happy note I think we might as well get started with this recipe what exactly do we need so all we're gonna need today is just a mixing bowl a whisk we'll need some vanilla essence cocoa powder bicarbonate of soda caster sugar cake flour and water I noticed you haven't used any eggs or oil in this recipe. Is there a reason? It's because today we're making a chocolate cake with mayonnaise. Okay, and you've chosen the Makoya of them all. Uh -huh. And what is it about mayo? Why are we using this in the recipe today? Because mayonnaise is actually a great substitute. If you've ran out of oil or you've ran out of eggs, it also makes a really delicious moist chocolate cake. I know, right? Excellent mayonnaise is perfect because it's rich, creamy and versatile, making it perfect for any technique, whether you're using it for hot or cold applications. So first off we'll start with our Excella mayonnaise. Okay. So next up we'll add our sugar. Okay. So now we're creaming the sugar and the mayonnaise together. Next we're adding our vanilla essence. We always add vanilla especially to chocolate because vanilla enhances the flavor of chocolate. And then next up we'll add our tempered water so we're just mixing all the wet ingredients first and then we'll add the sifted dry ingredients first we'll start with our cocoa I like to use a combination of Dutch chocolate and normal cocoa powder it just gives it a really rich flavor Another thing that makes the Excella perfect is because you've decided to use bicarb in your recipe. The chemical reaction between something very acidic and the bicarb helps with your cake. It gives it so much more volume. And then we add our flour. It's important to sift because sometimes you can have lumps, you know, because the cake flour has been standing in the store and, you know, when things stand, they tend to become full of lumps and they become hard so it's always good just to sift it to make sure that your cake will be nice and fluffy. People get very intimidated when making cake and especially chocolate cake. What do you think people get wrong? One of the things people tend to get wrong is that they tend to over mix a cake mm -hmm. you know and it's very important just to mix it until it's combined and then that's it. That batter already looks so divine. I know, it does. <laughs> I mean, we hardly got any cakes in the oven because I ate the batter half the time. <laughs> so what consistency are we looking for? We're just looking for a very smooth consistency. You'll see the batter will become shiny and smooth and, and that's when you know it's ready, when everything is well combined. Okay, perfect. And how long do we bake this for? For 30 to 35 minutes on 180 degrees. Perfect. That looks fantastic. It does. It's absolutely ready to go into the oven right now. Perfect. Let's get it in there. Okay. I guess this is the perfect time to get started on our frosting. Yep, the perfect timing. Awesome stuff. So before we go too far, may I ask you please just to melt the sugar, the brown sugar and the butter for us okay, together. Sure. The reason we're melting the two together is because we want a beautiful smooth consistency to be added to the rest of these ingredients, which is cocoa powder, some icing sugar and some milk. So 
all I'm gonna do now is just mix together our cocoa powder and our icing sugar. Now, Lamiza, I know most times people would use room temperature butter, but the reason we're melting our butter here is because we want it to have that caramelly flavor. Talking about caramel, I think it's ready. All right, bring it over. Perfect, so you can drop that in there. It actually even looks a little bit like fudge. Which yes, makes it, it does. Perfect. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna try, or rather, I'm gonna make sure I infuse and slowly incorporate this caramel with the rest of our frosting, but we obviously want it to not be too thick, so I'm also gonna add some milk to that. Let me you know I haven't been to the gym in a very long time, and I think this needs an electric beater. Oh, girl, to me, I got you. Look. They don't call me the master baker for nothing. Girl, you've got me working so hard, Kent, you've already got the frosting done. <laughs> These are not the cakes that we just baked. Um, obviously, we need to let those ones cool down first. Um, so I've prepared these already for us, so they are ready to be frosted. Is there a reason why they need to be cooled? If you place the frosting onto a hot cake, it will literally melt and the cake will fall apart. So we need it to be cooled before we frost it. Wow, they look absolutely divine, but the frosting is missing, so let's do it. Hey, great, let's go. Do you have any tips and tricks? Because some people tend to get their frosting either too thick or too um, runny. What would you say people need to bear in mind when they're making okay. frosting? Okay, it's all about the butter. It's very important that your butter is actually um, room temperature. If you have um, melted butter or if your butter is too runny, it can actually create a sloppy mess. But I mean, for this one, we actually made a caramel. So that's the difference. Okay, so the piping's done. So now we're just going to smooth it out. Lamise, on your Instagram, I've noticed that your cakes are mm -hmm. always so smooth. How do you get that right? It's just as simple as putting your metal scraper into some hot water just give it a good wipe and there you go you're definitely a master at this can i give it a go <laughs> of course you can awesome stuff i'm gonna do the last layer great perfect so just pipe in a circular motion mm -hmm. all around until you've reached the center until i've reached the center don't judge me south africa i haven't <laughs> frosted a cake in a very long time It's so beautiful to see a master baker in their territory doing their thing. And I see you're using edible flowers. Yes, I, I love flowers. It's like one of my tips if you want to decorate a cake and you're stuck and you don't know what to do, just add edible flowers. It adds color, it adds life, and everybody loves it. And it's always a nice conversational piece because everyone's always like, can you eat those? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> Voila, we're done. Aren't you just a genius? <laughs> Thank you so much for having us in your kitchen. It's I've a learned pleasure. so much. Oh, I'm so glad. Well, South Africa, if you also want to learn more, we've replaced two ingredients with just one excellent mayonnaise to give you this deliciously decadent chocolate cake. And if you want to get your hands on it, just go to afternoonexpress.co.za for the full recipe and ingredient list. The coffee is hot, the rusks are out, and the players are ready. And it's time to get down with another game of five seconds. Now today we have the lovely Dumi going head to head against our favorite chef chart. The rules are easy. You both have five seconds to answer my questions and today your theme is all things food. Now the winner takes home a <laughs> peanut butter Omar rusk. Sounds simple enough? Yeah. Sounds yep. Simple. Okay, ready, action, do me. You have five seconds for me, girlfriend. Please, may you name me three yellow fruit. Yellow fruit, a peach, a mango, and a yellow plum. They are yellow plums, Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Is a peach yes. yellow? Or is it yeah, orange? Yellow peach. Okay, everyone upstairs says that it's yeah. fine. <laughs> 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 Congratulations to me, and it's fine. Everyone says absolutely. <laughs> Chef Chart, it's mm -hmm. just that simple, but your okay. round goes like this. Mm -hmm. Please may you name me three pink or purple vegetables. You've got purple spotted broccoli, you've got purple cauliflower, and you've got purple mange too. Mm. You know what? <laughs> this round is difficult because he started the third one 
at With the five seconds. One second to go and finished it outside those seconds. Oh. But upstairs <laughs> says that it is fine. They will give you it. Oh, there we go. Thank you, guys. I have to remind you, you have to get it within five seconds. So whether you think about it, you have to deliver within five seconds. Ooh. Keep it quick, keep it snappy. Do me in five seconds, please, may you name me three things you can chop. An onion, a carrot, and cabbage. <laughs> 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 so Chef Chad, let's keep uh, the pace going. Good. Please, may you name me three foods you can peel? Banana, orange, nachi. Ooh. Just like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going down easy today. <laughs> In fact, it got me sweating. It just might be my coffee, though. <laughs> Chef Dumi, please, may you name me three classic Afrikaans dishes? Malva pudding, boiki, and seho. Sahu. <laughs> Is Malva pudding? I'm just maybe I'm a difficult. I, I'm a tough audience. I'm a tough crowd. <laughs> I don't know if Malva pudding is South African Afrikaans. Uh, well, as the history books would say, good to it is. Chef Charles, please may you name me three traditional South African dishes. Oxtail. Uh, what else? Oh, you cooked it last week. Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> what is that? And she steals the <laughs> just like that, what do we... just sneaks into uh, the lead. Well done to me. Um, Musho but... Samp. Samp, that was what I was looking for. Uh, oh, I knew we were cooking it here just the other week. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh well, you know, well done to me. Hopefully, do me fluffs here and stumbles, and then you can take it. Oh, we still got another go. One. Yeah, oh, still okay. got another go. All right, mm. okay. Do me, you've got five seconds to please name me three ingredients in your fridge right now. I've got bacon, I've got cheese, and I've got milk. I got that she could be lying. Yeah! I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations, <laughs> Chef Chart. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have to get this, otherwise, you will be a loser. Uh -oh. Chef Chart, mm -hmm. it's very serious now. Please may you name me three of your favorite ingredients. Butter, cream, vanilla. Oh. That's my <laughs> I'm so glad you started with butter. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> do me, I think that this is the last round, if I am yeah. not mistaken. So again, if you do fluff this, then Chef Chart has the opportunity to square up the points. Okay. And then you both will be <laughs> splitting a box of Oribar rusks. <laughs> Let's do this. Chef Dumi, please may you name me three things you can cover in chocolate. Strawberries, chilies, and myself. <laughs> The latter is for a whole different <laughs> show, by the way. <laughs> but absolutely, you got it right, my girl. <laughs> and Chef Chod, finally, please may you name me three dishes to cook on the first date. Mm. Ooh, panna cotta, yes. creme brulee, and chocolate uh, brownies. Yes, <laughs> just like that. <laughs> <laughs> something romantic, uh, something beautiful, something cute, and also foodie. But on that note, our queen of the five second yeah. game, let me tell you, you stood no chance. <laughs> <laughs> Do me again. Congratulations, my girl. This goes to you. Uh, you. Now, first date or not, impress the ones you love by coming home with 1,000 Rand in cash and a delicious Omar Rusk hamper. To win, tell us where in the world you would love to dip an Omar Rusks while on holiday. You can enter on the Afternoon Express Facebook or Twitter page, but be sure to include the hashtag dipping time. All the T's and C's can be found on our website. Anytime is dipping time when it's with the ones you love. Now we are in the business of making magic here on Afternoon Express. So coming up, we show you how to make a self-sourcing chocolate pudding. And it's a recipe you won't want to forget.
Welcome back to Afternoon Express, where I think it's safe to say we're ready for some desserts. Now, a self-sourcing pudding, especially the chocolate kind, is a classic dessert that everyone should know. The magic happens when the batter turns into a moist chocolate cake, and we're serving it with a warm, generous dollop of Clover Classic Custard. Do me as we are speaking about that delicious mm -hmm. Clover Classic Custard. Girl, just show us that finished product and what that Clover cu Classic Custard can do. Balissa, as we've said, there's no better pairing for any dessert than Clover Classic Custard. And Bali, I just love the fact that not only can you pair it as, uh, you know, a topping on a dessert like this, I've actually, like we did last time, we used it as the sauce in our malva pudding, remember? Mm -hmm. So you could put it inside, you can put it on top. This is why it makes it perfect for this dessert. And Chef Charts, the entire day this afternoon, we've been focusing on chocolate, but now it's the way to enjoy it traditionally in a chocolate cake. Absolutely. I mean, what more of a combination? You've got chocolate cake and you've got this rich sauce. So you can just see it just sort of lurking under the bottom there. I mean, what a combination. It just makes it so much more unctuous and just, oh, you just want to sit there on a mm. cold day and devour it. But the difficult part for me to understand is how then do we make sure that that self-sauce is just there? It's intact throughout the baking process. I want to get this right. Let's do it, Balissa. To get it right, I'm going to be making the sauce. And for this self-sourcing uh, uh, dessert that we're making. I've got some water, some caster sugar, vanilla essence, and cocoa powder, which is, like we said in the beginning, is the barest form of the cocoa powder before it gets all those, uh, the chocolate, before it gets all those other additions to it. And then you guys will be making the cake batter for us, which Chef will talk us through. Okay, so what we're trying to do is blend different types of ingredients. So you've got all the dry ingredients on your side, which you just want to sieve and just aerate it, take out any, any lumps, especially this time of year, Bit more moisture in the air, things can clog together, but especially with the uh, cocoa powder, it's got a very, very fine micron. So mm. things do clump together, you know, quite quickly. So you're doing all the dry ingredients, and I'm going to do the wet ingredients. So similar consistencies merging together. So this is the, the simplest form of making a cake batter or making a dough or anything, is all the wet ingredients in with all the dry ingredients. So I've got the butter, the milk into my egg. I'm just going to whisk that together. Chef, as you keep whisking it together, I mean, something here that I think I keep trying to bring my mind around is that, yes, we are creating something that is moist with a bit of a sponge, but it's essentially a pudding rather than a cake. I do love myself a cake, and it does look like a cake. However, the way in which we're preparing it and this specific recipe lends itself to be more of a pudding. Correct. I'd like to think, Balissa, one of the reasons why it sets apart between a cake and a pudding is that the cake comes in the uh, for lack of a better word, let's say the drier state where it doesn't have any of the sauce or the pudding or the stodginess that will, or not stodgy, but moistness that comes from the pudding. Whereas um, um, the, the pudding in this instance, we've got a sauce going it, into it and the sauce is inside of the cake and not necessarily poured onto. Okay. Whereas the cake, you'd be layering with whatever sauce or a frosting, whatever. Beautiful. Yeah. And Chef, here on this side, this is exactly what you were talking about. Absolutely. When you were saying, Uguti, um, uh, granules, let me actually show South Africa if I do this. This is the granules that got left behind from that cocoa. Yeah, so you can just push those through. So if you pop those back into your sieve and just, just pop those through the sieve just ever gently, because what happens with those globules is you're going to come across a sort of a, a pocket of powder, mm. which you don't really want to at the end of the day. So that's why it's important mm. just to sieve it through and just like you're that. done. Mm. Just like that. Salt. Bit of salt <laughs> there. And there we go. So all you need to do is just make a bit of a mix of all the dry ingredients together, bit of a well in the center, take in your wet ingredients, pour that straight in just like that, and then start working that in with your spatula. And what you end up with is this gorgeous mm. dark, and you can see the richness coming through from the cocoa powder there. It's essential to get this batter correct because essentially that batter is what we're talking about when it needs to be moist, self-soothing, uh, self-serving and self-sourcing. <laughs> no, I'm adding all the S's because essentially that is what it feels like being able to enjoy this dish. Now, everyone knows the dessert for me is something I skip, but this is something that we have to try at home. But Chef here, yeah, we, we were speaking earlier about baking chocolates, the different types of chocolates that we're using. When we do focus on this recipe, what would be the best chocolate to use? And especially when we want to now create a delicious icing, would we change the chocolate? Well, so what you want to do with, with something to put an icing, remember on similar consistencies. Yeah. So I'm going to pass that to, to me to put into the into the baking dish. So with your icings, again, you know, what is what is co co uh, co uh, cocoa powder? Pe cocoa powder is just something that is, is basically bitter, in yeah. essence, or is, is savory. So you want to add sugar, so you blend in 
your, your um, uh, ice and sugar and your cocoa powder, similar things binding together. So the cocoa powder is flavoring the sugar and you're gonna mix that together and then add in whatever you want to do. It could be a little okay. bit of lemon juice, could be a little bit of water for a basic icing. You could then start adding butter to it to make a butter icing. You could add meringue to make a meringue icing and so it goes on. But all the different sort of styles of icings, you'll use different types of chocolate as well. So not just the cocoa powder, you'll start mm. to actually melt chocolate and add that in. Again, you're gonna get something a little bit more richer. If you want something a little bit more lighter, remember what's the cocoa powder doing? It's absorbing liquid. Mm. We've got something a little bit more liquid, a lot more fluid, a lot mm. more flexible then you're gonna you start using mm. a ordinary sort of eating chocolate per se so generally as a whole your baking chocolate you're going to be actual would suggest baking with it you can add it into your into your final um your icings and things but remember it's got no extra sugar so you have to make sure that, that is working correctly so your ratios are correct so your final profile is also in balance with what you are covering. What are you making? And, and here you also added, I know this is not really a chocolate, but this is caramel. Oh, Beautiful little like, caramel oh, pops. Mm, I would say, Cody, mm, he's mm, been enjoying mm, them oh. throughout the show. He's been okay. <laughs> but what if we were to add something like mm. this? I mean, it's not really chocolate, but I just can't imagine it in a dessert like this in a pudding. So basically that's sort of flavoured white chocolate in, in essence. So what they've taken is the sugar and the milk powder and they've roasted it, they've caramelised it and then put the fat in to um, give us the wonderful consistency that it is. And you have to have this unctuous, bittersweet profile coming through from it. So again, there are just so many different ways with you know, chocolate that you can you can add flavor to and that it reacts uh, you know, differently to it. And when it all just comes together and it all just melts, oh, I mean, one goes in the oven with that lo lovely <laughs> bit of sauce poured over, comes out the oven, oh, wow. look at this. I can just see Toomey just taking that and just sitting <laughs> and dividing that, right? You know me too well, oh, Chef, you know goodness. me too well. Just a tip when it comes to that uh, dessert we just made, when you're adding the vanilla essence to the sauce, do not add it while it's still on the heat. Make sure you remove it and add it at the end once you're basically about to put your cake into the oven. Chef, any... On that. Any last tips on your side? Well, think of chocolate. Chocolate melts in the palm of your hand. Yeah. So gentle heat, everybody. Mm -hmm. Don't go and ram base it with lots of heat in that because it's going to become burnt, burned very easy because it's got the sugar in it and become very bitter. So treat it gently with a bit of love. As much as you love chocolate, it's going to love you back as well. So Beautiful. look after it. And if you love this recipe, please just head over to afternoonexpress.co.za. So we've had classic fashion from Tindy, classic cars, thanks Chad, and we've seen classic hairstyles. And you, Michael? Classic. A classic range from Clover, timeless taste. Made with love by Clover. We have been celebrating World Chocolate Day. It was yesterday, but you know what? We're making it a week-long affair. So I think it is time to kick back, relax, and enjoy the fruits of our labor. What would you say, Dumi? Yes to that. Oof.
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now it is that part of the show where we get to enjoy all of our hard work put together in these recipes. Now today we've just got so many delicious chocolate treats. So let's eat, Dumi. What did we prepare? We made a whole lot of deliciousness using chocolate pellets. So we started off with those awesome ribs. In fact, Chef, now that we touch on it, may I please have some? Some Absolutely. awesome ribs that we coated in a cocoa rub, Balissa, and paired those beautifully with some potato wedges. We then followed up with our so delicious good. chicken um, that we made also with a chocolate barbecue sauce, who would have thunk? And then we have these two beautiful desserts that, I mean, typical of how you'd use chocolate, um, you'd bake with it. So we've got a self-sourcing pudding and we've got this amazing chocolate cake. Oh, what a combination. I mean, you know, it's amazing how versatile chocolate really is. And we should be trying it more in savory, you know. Mm -hmm. Let's get creative, guys, and that's what it's all about. I love that. I mean, Chef Chart and myself are already fighting over who's going to be dishing up what first. <laughs> because it all looks so delicious. I know for myself, I'm most looking forward to try all the savory dishes with the chocolate. Like the ribs, like the chicken. Um, because I already know, I've, I've, I've enjoyed chocolate in dishes like pudding so many times. So this is quite nice. It's a fresh way to turn it on its head. Now, Chef, as you're diving into that chicken, is it beautifully cooked through, succulent? The colour on that is great. Well, again, exactly what I was going to say, the colour. And that's what, you know, we eat with our eyes. Yeah. So you've got this wonderful darkness, you've got that richness coming through, that the chocolate sort of giving that, you know, wonderful mm -hmm. depth of not just flavour, but the, the colour that we have. Mm -hmm. And then you've got something vibrant with the salad as well. So it's a combination of things. And, you know, we eat with our eyes. Mm -hmm. Just think, 85% of our decisions that we make in anything is done with our eyes. So straight away we're gonna say, that's actually lovely, that's mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Only 15% is really made up of smell and flavor. Clips, ones. <laughs> and unlike most places, Balasa, where the looks are deceiving, where the food doesn't look as great as it tastes, on Afternoon Express, we promise you that it definitely delivers. So you better make sure you go on to afternoonexpress.co.za mm. to get the full ingredients list for all the recipes we prepared today. Now, you know I can't let you go without <laughs> testing your chocolate knowledge. So I want to find out from you, how does chocolate grow? Charts, do me. A, does it grow in the ground? B, does it grow in a vine? Or C, does it grow on trees? Balasa, I think it's an, an unfair question because I already <laughs> had a, a, a chocolate <laughs> class with uh, Dimo Simato's one. So I, I think I'll, I'll bail out of this chef and see if you know the answer. Well, I should really know the answer since <laughs> I have an exceptionally good friend that actually makes chocolates okay. and it does grow on trees. Okay. Well, thank you. The cocoa tree bears fruit on its trunk and branches. Now those are called pods and the pods contain seeds which are called cocoa beans. And the beans are made up of seed coats, a kernel, and a germ. Now that essentially, as Chef has said, makes its way into the delicious chocolate that we have enjoyed today. Absolutely, and it's quite an incredible process because you actually want to ferment mm. the um, cocoa beans itself. And that's what starts to give this wonderful depth of flavor. Mm. We start talking about earthy tones and you know, minerality coming through as well. That's what you get from the fermentation process and then you can obviously get to roast them, you get the separation, and you end up with this beautiful product. I mean, wow, chocolate really <laughs> is a hero. A hero and a hero <laughs> of our dining table. The ribs, the chicken, the pudding, mwah, magnifique. Now we're positively melting with all the great Chuck-inspired recipes from this week. Now, in case you have missed any, it is not too late. You can just tune in to our repeats this Saturday at 8.30 a.m. on S3. Then be sure to catch us for another treat next Tuesday and Thursday at 5.30 p.m. as we are joined by Tata Madiba's eldest grandchild, Undilega Mandela, to celebrate all things Mandela Month. But until then, good night, stay safe, and happy eating. Absolutely. <laughs> Say it with steaming hot breakfasts, soul food sundaes, and slow-cooked dinners that'll warm any winter. Made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.